We're going to go to a Kiwi in New York now. Danielle McLaughlin might come from Gisborne, but these days she's a lawyer and the co-author of a book called The Federalist Society, How Conservatives Took the Law Back from Liberals. She also makes regular appearances on American news networks talking about legal, constitutional and political issues as a columnist for the Sunday Star Times here at home. Uh, also, happily, she has her brother and sister with her from New Zealand and they are all together watching the election. A hearty kia ora to you, Daniel. How, Danielle, how are you? Kia ora, John. I'm, I'm well, thanks. How are you doing tonight? Or yeah, today, well, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. Oh, you there on Skype? I can see you. Hello. I'm, well, yes, look, I, 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 I'm <laughs> buggered. I'm bewildered. I, I, I'm a bit taken by surprise. You're there. You comment on this. What do you think about what's happening? I would say all of the above, John. Uh, buggered, bewildered and surprised. Uh, it's not over. The fat lady is not yet sung, but it's not looking good for Clinton. And I would say 24 hours ago, it was looking really good for her. Uh, so Donald, Donald Trump is pulling off uh, something rather extraordinary here. And I think there'll be a lot of navel gazing in the next couple of days if he does indeed win to understand exactly why. And can you start the navel gazing for us now, Danielle? Uh, 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 let's navel gaze together. And the question is, why? What was happening that we were missing out on? The political establishment was missing out on. The media establishment was missing out on. The pollsters were missing out on. The commentariat was missing mm. out on. What was happening? Well, I can talk a little bit about the blue wall, which is this 240 electoral votes that uh, Clinton was supposed to have had, right? And we're seeing in Michigan and Wisconsin particularly uh, very, very close calls. We're not sure which way it's going to go, but they no. might go to Donald Trump. And, and Clinton no. did not really pay a lot of attention there, thinking that they were sort of in the bag, as they have been uh, fairly reliably for many electoral cycles. Um, it, it, Donald Trump has run this very, uh, obviously, an anti-establishment campaign, but someone he's someone who hasn't really had a ground game, who hasn't had these very data-driven, um, done the data-driven politics that Obama did prior to Clinton and Clinton has done right now. And what we're seeing with, I guess, demographics is we knew that white, uh, non-college educated voters would go heartily for Trump. Mm. Uh, we're seeing more college educated white voters uh, go to Trump and actually a larger percentage of Hispanics actually or Latinos um, going to Trump than um, than we thought. So in 2012, Romney got 27%. It's looking like he's going to get 29%. That's not the 40% that George W. Bush got, but that's a not insignificant number of the, ele uh, of the electorate. Uh, Danielle, a CNN commentator has just said this was a white lash against a changing a country. Yes. So he's, he's taken backlash, he or she has taken backlash and put white in there, making it explicitly mm -hmm. about race. Is that your sense of it? And, and, and it's really important to be careful around these kind of prescriptions, isn't it? But is there now a sharp division along race lines in the United States? And when you throw class in and get low income whites, are they now, as the CNN commentator says, delivering a white lash? Yeah, so this is Van Jones, actually a, a man who I respect enormously, someone who's done enormous good in this country, worked for the Obama administration at one point, done a lot of great work. And what he's talking about is a reaction to the Obama presidency and perhaps some sort of latent... Uh, should we say, discontent. Um, mm. he, he's certainly talking about the race card, which is an awkward and ugly thing to talk about, especially as any night, but especially an, an election night. Um, but America is changing and the demographics are changing and what Donald Trump has sort of tapped into is this idea of sending America back 50 years um, when it was, uh, you know, the income inequality was less, when... Folks felt like they could get a good job, um, they could have re a good retirement. Um, people felt safe. And I think immigration and the kind of browning of America has created a threat. And this may be a reaction to that. We will see. I mean, this is also a populist uh, expression, which we've seen in France with Marine Le Pen. We've so seen this in Brexit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. There are so many things going on here. It's almost like you can't narrow it down to just one thing. 
Uh, Danielle, it's so nice to talk to you. It's a, it's been a fascinating night. Is it over? Has Trump won this? Or if Clinton wins Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, can she do it? The question is, can she win those states? Right. You know, she was always favoured to win Pennsylvania, and that's got 20 electoral votes. That's the big prize of the prizes that are outstanding. Michigan, New Hampshire, Wisconsin together are, you know, what have we got here? 26, 32 votes, excuse me, electoral college votes. It's possible, but as the day has gone by, her chances of winning have dropped significantly hour by hour. Danielle McLaughlin, thank you so much for joining us via Skype. It's lovely to talk to you uh, on a fascinating night in the US.